Hello everyone, this is Wei Yuan, a math student from Nanjing University. Today I'm going to talk about how to improve new, uh, neural question generation by using deep linguistic representation. This paper is wrote by me and my supervisors Tie Ke He and Xin Yu Dai. First of all, let's get started by knowing what question generation is. Question generation, also called QG, is a challenging natural language processing task which aims at generating questions with given answers and a catalyst. Of course, the answer is optional in the input. With the development of uh, neural network technology, most of current approaches address QG by applying the sequence-to-sequence -sequence framework a sequence-to-sequence -sequence framework contains two parts. An encoder converts the inputs into vectors, and a decoder generates a question with the encoder's vectors. So why do we need to do research in QG area? There are at least three applications of QG systems. First of all, QG can automatically augment question-answering data sets. As we all know, the improvement of QA performance partly depends on the emergence of large data sets. Handcrafted QA data sets is high quality, however, is expensive because it requires lots of labors. In this aspect, automatically generated QA data is valuable. Secondly, in the dialogue systems, sometimes we need the model to uh, guide the conversation in order to gather some useful information from users. So in this scenario, QG can guide uh, can generate some questions automatically to gather this information. In addition, QG can help teacher produce some educational material such as reading comprehension, which is a task. Uh, give students a passage of articles with a batch of questions automatically. If we use the QG, it can automatically uh, create these questions. After knowing the QG task in general, so let's discuss what a good question is. A good question contains many characteristics. For example, a good question should be context-related. If a generated question is irrelevant to the input context, it might be useless. Also, a good question can be answered by the given answers. If, it, if its answerability is not good, which means the question cannot be answered by others, this question might be meaningless. So to achieve these things, model need to know uh, how to select proper content, content and uh, how to construct questions. And all these things are based on deep understanding of inputs, including understanding the input semantic meaning and the syntactic structure or entity information and so on. Harrison et al. did experiments to prove that via is some linguistic features, QG models can obtain better performance. So what, what are linguistic features? In this paper, we mainly focus on three linguistic features, name entity recognition, part of speech, and the question answering features. Name entity recognition uh, denote the named entities in the sequence uh, in the sentences. The commonly used NER labels include number, location, religion, person, and so on. And the POS indicates the property of a certain words. For example, RB denotes the adverb. QAF is the linguistic uh, feature we proposed in, in order to uh, help QG model uh, understand the passage from a different way. Let's 
uh, introduce the QAF. QAF, we, we view QA as a dual task of QG, as we can see in the picture. QG is answers and uh, passage then outputs questions. On the other hand, QA uses questions and the passage as input, output the answers. We at first train a QA system, then in QG stage, we only give the passage to the QA model in order to get the hidden states. We use these hidden states as QAF's representation. We think these hidden states can give QG system certain information about the relationship among passage answer and questions. Therefore, help the QG understand the context from different perspectives. Although linguistic features carry um, much information that is useful for generating questions, existing linguistic features representation cannot fully exploit this power. As far as we know, almost all the existing approaches of utilizing linguistic features are the same. They use a trainable matrix to transform the linguistic feature labels into vectors, which is the same as the traditional word embedding. We call this method, uh, method lookup embedding representation. Obviously, this means has at least two drawbacks. Firstly, this lookup embedding method overlooks the relationship among labels. For example, the NER labels of Los Angeles is lock lock. Lock is short for location. Lookup embedding transforms each lock label into the same vector uh, separately. It can describe the loss or the angulars are the uh, special entities. However, it cannot represent Los Angeles as a whole is a lo lo uh, location. And this is actually what we want the model to know. Another flaw is that it identifies each linguistic features with a static vector, so it cannot capture the dynamic meaning of labels. For example, RB denotes adverb. All the RB in the lookup embeddings are the same because the static vectors. However, RB labels can not only modify a verb, but also an adjective or another adverb. To address all these problems, we propose a deep linguist feature representation method. We employ pre-trained model and fine-tune them in specific tasks to get different linguist representation model. For example, if we want to get an ER representation model, we just need to fine tune pre trained model in NER tasks. Then we utilize these hidden states as the representation vectors. Because we think, you know, in the fine tune task, the hidden states is used to predict the labels. So if if the model perform well in the uh, fine tuned task. That means the hidden states contain enough information to denote the linguistic labels. This is the uh, overall structure of our method. In the experiments, we utilize the paragraph level QG model proposed by Zhao et al. as our base model. Uh, its model contains two important components, a gated self-attention and a, a maps-out decoder. The gated self-attention is used to integrate paragraph information, and the maps-out decoder is used to avoid repetition problems. We add the contextual word embedding, the PLS, NER, and QAF's deep linguistic representation, to the base model. We do, ex uh, we do experiments on two 
commonly used dataset Squatter and MS Marco. We also employ Blue, Material, RogL, and QBlue as our evaluation metrics. QBlue is used to measure the question's answerability on Squatter. Here is the main comparison results of our approach with uh, the baseline models on Squatter. Overall, by incorporating new features representation, our model obtained a previous performance. Uh, except the material, our model actually achieved the state-of-the-art performance. Here is the example. Uh, here is the main results of MS Marco by incorporating deep linguistic representation. Uh, our model outperformed the previous work. However, the QAS actually decreased the model's performance, and the reason is because the QA model doesn't achieve good performance on MS Mark, so its hidden states might even contain some. Uh, noise information. We also analyze the info influence of deep linguistic representation for question type. Question type, you know, is vital for question generation because it guides the relation gener uh, it guides the remain generation process and determines part of question meanings. For example, two sentences. What was the major reason and justification for the European wars of religion? And who was a major reason and justification for the European wars of religion? These two sentences are only different in the question type. However, its meaning is totally different. As we can see in the in these two picture, question type accuracy is improved no matter on score or MS marker. Besides, we also visualize the gated self attention to show the effect of deep linguist representation. The right picture is from improved model. As we can see, the attention scores are higher in the right place. Also, we do case studies on two samples. For the first example, the standard question is asked about band without linguistic features the base model generates question about the base model generates question about some which is obviously improper meanwhile from the content of the base model's question we can see the model doesn't know Paul Gascoigne is a whole entity after incorporating our linguistic features uh, the model generates the question correctly, both in the same and the semantic meaning. For the second example, it's a challenging example because it contains so many named entities, and most of these entities are not a single tokens. In order to generate correct questions, the model should identify the linguistic features and its relationships among entities. By utilizing the deep linguistic feature representation, the model generates a question which we, uh, whose meaning is the same as the uh, standard questions. So that is what we do in our paper. We propose a new feature, QAF, and uh, present a deep linguistic feature representation method. We also do extensive experiments to show the superior of our model. Finally, we do a case study to detailly analyze the benefits of our approach. So that's all. Thank you for your listening.